Father, which art in heaven, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for all the many wonderful messages you've given us through your word. And we ask that you be with us as we dive into your word. In Jesus' most holy and most precious name, amen. I want to start today and share with you my experiences with God and how he showed me through his word and life lessons on how to give glory to him and how important it is to give glory, all the glory to God. I want to share some definitions of the word glory. It means to praise, honor, worshipfully praise, give thanksgiving, a state of great gratification or exaltation, a height of prosperity or achievement. Now I want to share uh, an experience I had when I was like younger. Um, I actually am super old. I used to go to church next door I went to church here in Red Deer before this building even existed. We used to have church in the school gym next door. And when I was younger and I attended that Southside Christian School, before it used to be called Red Deer Adventist Academy, um, we used to play floor hockey. When I, I was very competitive, especially when it came to all sports. Any sports that I would play, I wanted always to be on the winning team. I also wanted to be the best player in the game. One of the game, and floor hockey was our favorite. When we all first started playing, we played for the fun of the game. It started, but then as we all got better at the sport, we started all to become very competitive. We started to care which people were, we were on, that were on our team. We only wanted the skilled and best players with us. When we were down on the scoreboard, we would start blaming each other for not covering their position properly. We, we would even keep track of how many goals and assists we had got in each game. Every time we would score a goal, the whole team would cheer loudly. We would like huddle together and give each other praise. Way to go, great, good, good job, great goal. We were all starting to act like we were playing in the NHL. We were not even playing on ice, we were playing on a floor. I'll never forget the first time I scored a hat trick. A hat trick is when you are able to score three goals in one game. I remember my teammates being happy for me and celebrating with me. All of us were always trying to win for the glory of our team and ourselves. Some people try to find glory for themselves through achievements in sports like basketball, boxing, or the Olympics. Some people try to get glory by gathering riches and wealth, trying to become a billionaire. There is a question that I continue to ask myself. That question is, do I give glory to God or do I give glory to myself and my abilities? For every movement that I make in my life, for every decision made, is it to glory, glorify my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or is it to glorify myself? Let us turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 10.31. 1 Corinthians 10.31. It reads, so whether, you, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. In my relationship with Jesus, he taught me something important. In order to witness to people around you, you must not be afraid to give glory to God in public. Let me give you an example of what I am talking about. Say you are at work and your coworker tells you, thank you for helping me finish that project yesterday. 
you are a big help to me, do you answer him or her with, you're welcome? I'll do it, I'll always do that for you and just walk away. Or do you tell them, I am glad I could help you, praise God. I guarantee you that if you start talking the same way that you talk at church, at your workplace, you will start to have more conversations about God in your workplace. If you start giving glory to God everywhere that you go, like the grocery store or at the park, people will start to notice. Now, I'm not saying that it will always be a positive interaction. Not everyone w wants to hear about God, but people would now know that you believe God is your creator. Let us now turn in our Bibles to 2 Timothy 3.12. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. It reads, In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So, that's just part of being a Christian. Expect it. It's okay. As long as God is, as long as God is with you, with you, it's okay. Don't worry about being persecuted about that. I want to tell you a story about myself. As I grew up in the church, I remember being afraid to say loudly to everyone who could hear, to say loudly so everyone could hear me the words, amen, and praise God, and hallelujah. I am wondering if anyone here had the same experience as me. If you had the same experience, please say amen. amen. So there are many people I didn't hear that I guess not everyone had the same experience as me, but it's just strange because then everyone would be saying praise God loudly in church every Sabbath, but that's okay. I want to give you an example of how I used to praise God in church. The pastor would be giving a sermon, and if God's words through the pastor would touch my heart, I would then try to make eye contact with the pastor, nod my head, and in my head say, praise God. So I'd look at the pastor, he'd be like saying something, the Holy Spirit touched my heart, but i just go, try to like look for the pastor's eyes and go and then say praise God in my head, not out loud. And after a while, okay, sorry. It wasn't till I got married that I got comfortable saying praise God, God out loud. And with the full volume of my voice, and, and with the full volume of my voice, Nanette and I would come home after work and talk with each other about how our day went. Whenever I told her something that happened to me, it was good and exciting, that was good and exciting, she would say, praise God, and I would answer, amen. <laughs> and after a while, when she would tell me something exciting or some good news that happened to her, I would start to say, praise God, and she would reply, amen. And I praise God for giving me a wife that is such a great blessing to me. Now, now because I was saying it at home a lot, and I, I started to say it at church. And when I started to say it at home and church a lot, I started to say it everywhere I went. This experience taught me something important. It showed me how important it is to have God as the head of our families and to give God all the glory in our households. It really starts at home. If you give glory to God in your home, you will have an easier time giving glory to God everywhere you go. Let us go to the Bible to see some examples of people who were not afraid, and, al and also some people that were afraid to give glory to God. Let us first turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 
33 to 37. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 33 to 37. It reads, Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are, not, you are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. David started young, having a close relationship with God. Notice how David, when he was trying to convince King Saul to let him battle Goliath, that he did not take credit for killing the lion and the bear. He gave all credit to God. And when he defeated Goliath, he also gave all credit to God. Let us now turn in our Bibles to 1 Chronicles, verse 29, 10 to 15. 1 Chronicles, verse 29, verse 10 to 15. It reads, David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have given only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all of our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. The picture of God that David paints for us with these words are how we should always see God every moment of our lives. Our God is everlasting. Our God is all-powerful. Everything in this universe belongs to God. Everything we have comes from God. Let us turn our Bibles now to Luke 17, chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. And it reads, it, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village where he met ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go shew yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering him said, Where there are, where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. And he said unto them, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. When I read this story, when I read this story, sometimes I feel sad because a lot of the time in my life, I act like 
I'm one of the nine lepers that didn't come back to glorify God. The very first time I heard this story, I used to think, of course, of course I'm like the one leper that came and returned to God to give thanks. I used to judge the nine that didn't come back to Jesus. I used to think, how could they be so ungrateful after Jesus did something so great and amazing for them? But the more I read this story of the ten lepers, the more I realized how much more I acted like the nine lepers in my day-to-day -day life. I started to think of all the amazing things God has done for me, all the blessings he has given me, all the love he has for me, and for all God has done for me, how many times did I go back to Jesus to thank him? How many times did I act like the one leper that came back? Which one of the lepers do you relate to more? Let us turn our Bibles to Luke 22, chapter 22, verse 31 to 34, and then I'm going to... And then after, I'm going to go straight into Luke chapter 22, verse 54 and to 62. So just stay in that chapter with me. It reads, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to shift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back strength, Strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times that you know me. And now let's go to verse on the same chapter, Luke 22, verses 54 to 62. Then seizing, seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance, and when, some of, and when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. I really relate to this story of Peter. Like Peter, when I am with my fellow brothers and sisters that believe in the same God as me, I have so much confidence. I am not shy to sing praises to God and to shout, shout praise Jesus and to tell everyone and talk about God. But as soon as I am in an environment where it is not popular to talk about Jesus, I am not as confident and I start to act like Peter. This is what happens when we rely on our own strength. We need to realize that we cannot do good on our own because anything good comes from God. There is no good in us. It only comes from God. Let us turn our Bibles to Matthew 5, verse 16. This is the scripture reading. I want you to read it with me. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We really need to let our shine, our light shine for others. But we can't do that without God. We need God's light in us so that we can properly glorify God. 
Let us do good for God. Every good thing that we do, we cannot be, it cannot be for the glory of ourselves. When we do something good for someone else, we must give all glory to God. A way to remember to give glory, glory to God is to remember that He is our Creator. Let us not forget how big our God is. Praise Jesus for our Lord and Savior. And I just want to do one thing before I close. I want to get the attention of all the young people here in the church. If you're 20 and below, I want you to pay attention to me right now. Do I have your attention? Anyone 20 and below? I want you, before we close, to as loud as you can say, praise God. As loud as you can. Anyone, all the young people. So one, two, three. Praise God! And don't be afraid to say praise God.